Um, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Bill Lester. Um, Bill's going to tell us a little bit about um, kind of some things that are going on in the, in the uh, Eastern market right now uh, as far as uh, pests and uh, um, some more specific issues with uh, Western bean cut worm. But uh, Bill, just tell us a little about yourself and what you do and then uh, we can go into a little bit more about the, the issues we're seeing right now in, in the field. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, once again, I'm Bill Lester. I'm the Territory Sales Manager with Bear Crop Science in southwestern Ontario. The region that I cover runs basically from London down to Windsor and up to Sarnia. Perfect. I appreciate that, uh, Bill. Um, so, we're seeing there's um, kind of it's an ongoing issue year to year, but um, it's probably about timing right now to talk a little bit about Western bean cutworm and uh, issues that uh, might be uh, affecting farmers right now. Uh, can you go into a little bit of detail on that? Western bean cutworm in southwestern Ontario, the region that I cover, has actually been with us now for I think 10 to 12 seasons. Um, we, we started seeing this pest uh, in 2009-2010. Um, initially, you know, these populations of western bean cutworm we thought were migrating in from the U.S. on storm front, fronts and, uh, you know, the prevailing winds, but we quickly discovered that uh, they found themselves quite at home and were able, able to uh, overwinter here and subsequently we deal with them on a perennial basis now. Um, you know, their populations tend to go up and down based on how hard of a winter we have. Uh, that can affect uh, how how well they can survive from year to year. Uh, but even the hardest winters that we've had the last uh, 10 years or so does not seem to uh, totally eradicate their population. They, they, they still seem to be back every year. So um, before we talk about control measures, let's just talk about what the impact of Western bean cutworm can do uh, to the crop uh, as far as uh, the, the health of the, of the plant and the yield. This pest uh, tends to uh, um, congregate in, in the ear. Uh, more than one larva can be found per ear. Sometimes, you know, it's not uncommon to find five or six larva in an ear of corn. And you can certainly imagine a cutworm inside an ear of corn uh, can certainly start to damage a lot of kernels as they're trying to develop and uh, can take away uh, from yield potential. Obviously, it's the grain. Uh, within the year that we're going to harvest. And I've seen yield impacts, you know, with uh, significant levels of western bean cutworm in a field, anywhere from 10 to 12 bushels per acre, uh, right off the top from, from uh, you know, yield loss. So it, it can be a very significant pest as far as incurring a yield loss. The other uh, uh, couple things that, uh, that come along with the yield loss are uh, the quality of the grain that's harvested is quite often uh, suboptimal. It can be full of fines and particulate matter, which makes drying the crop more difficult, uh, makes storing the crop more difficult. And on top of that, um, when western bean cutworm is feeding on the ear, it can open up that ear to secondary infection for ear, ear molds uh, from Fusarium, Gibrelli ear rot, Diplodia. Uh, so once again, that can further deteriorate the quality of the grain, impact yield, and some of these uh, ear molds can produce toxins such as Dawn that we get from Gibberella ear rot. So a pretty uh, uh, impactful uh, pest that's out there. But when should farmers be scouting and what should they be looking for? The, the time to start scouting for Western bean cutworm is kind of that pre-tassel stage. Um, about a week before that tassel is gonna emerge is when you wanna start scouting. Um, and then you wanna scout right through uh, through tassel emergence and early silking. Uh, that's typically when you're going to have the uh, adult western bean cutworm moths flying around uh, searching for fields at that stage to lay their eggs. Um, they are most attracted to corn that's in the tasseling stage. Uh, they will lay their eggs on the upper leaves of the corn canopy. Typically those eggs are going to get laid in, in masses that will range anywhere from 25 all the way up to 200 eggs in one single egg mass. Um, once those egg masses uh, get laid in the field, uh, it takes about five to seven days for the, for the eggs to hatch. Uh, they start, uh, those eggs, they start out a, a pearly white color. They, they kind of change to a tanny brown color and then eventually purple before they hatch. And then those young larvae 
uh, will move up to the tassel area initially and feed on fresh pollen as it starts to shed off the tassel. And then as soon as silks start to emerge within that uh, crop, they'll migrate down uh, the corn plant uh, and into the ear through the silk channel and then start feeding on uh, the silk and also developing kernels within, within the ear itself. Um, uh, we usually recommend that you, that you scout it um, a few different spots, 10 plants in a row. Um, usually the rule of thumb is try to scout at least five different areas within a field, maybe 10 plants for every 10 acres. Um, the cumulative th threshold is 5% um, of plants with an egg mass. Uh, so that's one plant in 20. If you find an egg mass, you're, you're at threshold and anything above that, obviously you're above threshold. Um, so if you're if you're in a field where you've you've uh, scouted and found um, egg masses above threshold, then your next choice is you know what do you do about it. So um, there are a few uh, insecticides registered on the market that that, that growers can can choose to apply uh, to their corn crop at tassel and early silking time to control western mean cowworm. Um, they all do a very good job. Um, uh, basically, it's the, the timing that really matters. You want to get on them uh, when they're tiny. Insects are always easier to control when they're small. So uh, that's, that's the application window that we really promote, is that when you see that uh, you're in that window where eggs have been hatching, you want to get that insecticide on, you know, within likely two to five days of those young larvae uh, being hatched. Um, they're easier to control before they enter the ear, so you got to get that insecticide on while they've moved up to the tassel area feeding on, on pollen and before they get inside that ear and protected uh, with the sheath of the, of the ear itself. Okay, well that's great. I um, appreciate that. Is there anything that, um, that growers can do um, before planting or post uh, harvest that can help uh, mitigate some of this as well? new for the 2020 season within our DeKalb lineup, we've actually introduced an, a new trait, uh, a new BT trait for above ground insect control. Um, it's called Tricepta rib complete. And we've got a couple of hybrids now in our lineup that uh, growers can choose in their hybrid portfolio um, that uh, will be able to uh, control Western mean cutworm uh, from the trait technology perspective, similar to how we've got BT corn that protects itself from European corn borer. Uh, the Triceptor rib complete uh, will give you above ground insect protection for corn borer as well as western mean cutworm and corn earworm. Perfect. Well, thanks, Bill. Um, this has been Bill Lester from uh, Bear Crop Science. And on behalf of farms.com, I am Andrew Bodden, and I wish you a well day. <laughs>